So in this video, I want to talk about the divisor function again, and recall that the divisor function d of n is just the number of positive divisors of n. So if n were equal to 4, well, 4 has three divisors, namely 1, 2, and 4, and the number of total divisors, um, the total number of divisors is 3, because uh, there's three divisors in total. And the way we wrote this in shorthand notation is that this, we write the sum of all divisors m of the number n equals 1. So d in this case is an arithmetic function and recall that in the previous video we looked at this formula and we proved this formula. And that says that if n has some prime factorization p1 to the power u1 times p2 to the power u2 all the way up to pr to the power ur where p1, p2 are primes and u1, u2, ur are the powers of these primes which are just some numbers, let's say some integers that are greater than zero or possibly equal to zero, then d of n has this uh, expression. d of n is equal to 1 plus u1 times 1 plus u2 all the way up to the one, all, all the way up to 1 plus ur. And we, we multiply all these together to get the value of d of n. And this is a really quick way of calculating um, the number of divisors of a number which happens to be very large if you know its prime factorization. So in this video, I want to prove that this divisor function is actually multiplicative. So what does multiplicative mean? So if you've got an arithmetic function f, which maps the natural numbers of the complex numbers, that's just the definition of an arithmetic function, we say that f is multiplicative if f of a b equals f of a times f of b whenever the natural numbers a and b are coprime. In other words, their highest common factor or greatest common divisor is equal to 1. So in other words, this is the same thing as saying um, for whenever GC, the GCD of a and b equals 1, or if you're in the UK, then the highest common factor of a and b equals 1. And I think they use the, um, this notation in other countries as well, apart from the UK. Okay, so if we wanted to prove that the divisor function d of n was multiplicative, we've got to show that d of a b equals d of a times d of b. So what do we want to do? We want to show, we want to show that, um, let's write it here, that d of a b equals d of a times d of b for some natural numbers a and b. So here's how I'm going to prove this. First, we're going to write down some prime factorizations of a and b. So let's suppose that a has the prime factorization p1 to the power u1 times p2 to the power u2 all the way up to pr to the power ur. And these u1, u2, u3, u4 all the way up to ur are just powers of prime numbers. So these are numbers which are either greater than zero or equal to zero, they're integers. And these p1, p2 up to pr are just prime numbers. So a for instance could be 2 to the power 3 times 5 to the power 6 times 7 to the power 10 or something. So A has some prime factorization. I'm also going to let B be equal to another prime factorization. I'm going to say that B is equal to Q1 to the power V1 times Q2 to the power V2 all the way up to, let's say, QS to the power VS. And in this case, B follows exactly the same sort of pattern as A. These Q1, Q2, all the way up to QS are prime numbers as well. And V1, V2, up to VS, these are just integer values which are greater than or equal to zero. So this could be, let's say, um, 3 to the power 4 um, times 5 to the power 2, um, all the way up to QS. Now, it's very important to know that these P1, P2 up to PR, and these Q1, Q2 up to QS, these are all distinct primes. And the reason why I want them to be distinct is because I want A and B to be co-prime. That means they don't share any common factors apart from one. So in order for um, A and B to be co-prime, I need to impose the restriction that each of these PIs and each of these QJs, so each of these P1 up to PR and Q1 up to QS, I need to make sure that each of these um, are co-prime. So in other words, none of these primes repeat itself. There's no, there's no possibility that P1 is equal to Q3, for instance. So each of these PI and QJ are distinct primes. So they're distinct prime numbers. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these prime factorizations to calculate uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side and show that they're the same thing. Okay, so if A equals, let me just scroll back up, 
if A equals P1 to the power U1, P2 to the power U2, all the way up to PR to the power UR, and B equals this expression here, then it follows that A times B is just a product of these two things. So A times B is going to be P1 to the power U1 times P2 to the power U2, all the way up to PR to the power UR. And since we're multiplying A by B, this is the A part, we've then got to multiply this by the prime factorization of B, which is Q1 to the power of V1 times Q2 to the power of V2, all the way up to QS to the power of VS. So that's the prime factorization of AB. So if this is AB, what is D of AB? Well, D of AB, recall that our formula for the divisor function, let us basically look at the primes in, in the prime factorization and just add one to the powers of those primes and then multiply them all together. So in this case, what do we have? Well, the first power is U1. So the first term is going to be one plus U1. And we're going to multiply that by 1 plus u2 because that's a second power appearing in the prime factorization. Um, 1 plus u2 all the way up to 1 plus ur. And then we get to q1 to the power of v1 um, and that gives us uh, 1 plus v1 times 1 plus v2 all the way up to 1 plus vs. And I've just got enough room there. Okay, so that's the that's an expression for d of ab. And by the way, this is this represents the prime factorization of ab. And the reason why it does represent the prime factorization is because a and b are co-prime, so each of these prime numbers are distinct. Each of these pi's and qj's. So this is my expression for d of ab. Now I want to compare that with d of a times d of b. Well, I know that d of a is what. Well, a had prime factorization. Um, let's see if I can find it. P one to the power u1 times p2 to the power u2 all the way up to pr to the power ur. So that means that therefore the number of divisors of a using our formula is just 1 plus u1 times 1 plus u2 all the way up to 1 plus ur. Okay, that's our expression for d of a. And d of b is what? Well, d of b was q1 to the power of v1 times q2 to the power of v2 and so on. So that means that our expression for d of b is just 1 plus v1 times 1 plus v2 all the way up to 1 plus vs. Okay, and that tells us that if we multiply d, d of a by d of b, we get d of a times d of b is equal to the product of these two expressions on the right hand sides of the equal signs. So that's 1 plus u1 times 1 plus u2 all the way up to 1 plus ur times this thing which is 1 plus v1 all the way up to 1 plus vs. So that's all of these terms here multiplied by all of these terms here. But now if we look at this term, so if we look at this expression we've got here for d of a times d of b and if we compare that to our expression for d of a times b which is here let's see if I can draw that in so if we look at these expressions then notice that the uh, the expressions for d of a b and d of a times d of b are exactly the same right so here we've got 1 plus u1 here we've got 1 plus u1 here we've got 1 plus u2 here we've got 1 plus u2, and likewise all of the factors which appear in this expression also appear in this expression, and they're completely equal. So that means that d of ab, so if the things on the right hand sides of the equations are equal, that means the things on the left hand sides of the equations must be equal too. So that tells us that d of ab is equal to d of a times d of b. So therefore, um, d of ab equals d of a times d of b. And that's true if a and b are co-prime. And that therefore proves that d is multiplicative. So d is multiplicative. 
Okay, so that's my video proving why the divisor counting function is multiplicative. Um, in our next series of videos, we're going to look at a different type of function, sigma n, um, which is basically the sum of the divisors, and we'll look and see if that function is multiplicative and examine some nice formulae for that function as well. So if you like this video, please leave a like, um, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. Thanks.